All right, hey, welcome back everyone. It's Faulty with Lost Hemisphere, and we're at Lackalode 2012. Uh, Matt Wilson has agreed to take a few minutes with us and answer a few questions. Thanks. So, uh, Matt, it's Lackalode 2012. It's your second year here. Uh, what's new, what's different, and what are you most jazzed about? Uh, what's new, what's different? What's jazzed about? Um, I, I guess I'm most jazzed about just doing this again and the prospects of continuing to do this every year. Last year we spent a lot of time talking to everybody on the floor, uh, finding out what they what they liked and what they wanted to see uh, in the future. One of the big changes in the main issue was adding a day to the, uh, to the weekend. Um, so instead of a two day affair, it's uh, three days of the And uh, that seems to be uh, going over really, really well. So, uh, you know, it sort of makes the, the plane ticket uh, totally spike the camera there. Um, <laughs> makes the plane ticket uh, more like it. Um, we added a whole bunch of new tables. Um, you know, the setup's a little bit different. There's a, there's a lot of new terrain out there, and so some really sick new tables. Um, the new diorama that they're showing off between the uh, table and the control bus. It's pretty sweet. Um, and uh, you know, we've got a good staff panel with some surprises tonight. We're just getting better at the seminars and everything. So it's kind of you know, it's a lot more of the same, but more and more of bigger. Better. Well, uh, I've, I've appreciated the extra day, and I actually came in yesterday uh, for the Private Tour Press Invitational made a comeback this year. Um, I guess, uh, given that you, you, know, you bring in the Private Tour Press volunteers from all over the world to sort of play at the mothership, uh, I guess what's the motivation for that? What is sort of the core philosophy of Private Tour Press regarding you know, the ambassadors out there? Well, I, I mean, I've, I've said it probably in every interview that I ever did, how important the press game is to, to Private Tour Press. I mean, really, we, uh, we exist, I believe, because of the whole hard work and effort that the press gangers have put into building the community around these games. Um, for us, the Invitational is kind of an opportunity to, uh, to really hang out and kind of chill with our main people, sort of, uh, play the games with them, talk to them in, a, in an environment where it's not, uh, it's not harassed by the chaos of you know, running these, these events, right? There's like a lot of coordination and uh, require the focus of the staff. So it's sort of a, a relaxed atmosphere where we get to enjoy uh, these people that we really owe so much gratitude to. Awesome. And so uh, the big drop here was Colossals, and, and at long last, these, these giant war constructs are on the table. And we know the Gargantuans are coming up, and we've heard that these have been in the works for a long time. I mean, they're finally on the table. What is, what's, what's your feeling? Uh, <laughs> Boy, exuberance! You know, I, I love seeing it out there. I love seeing that diorama and the uh, you know it sort of it changes the whole um, the visual scale, right? The aesthetic scale. You see these huge uh, these huge colossals next to you know war jacks that were, were pretty big on their own, and um, it just kind of like changes the scope of things. And yeah, it's been it's been years that we've been working on this since the the, uh, the conquest was the first one to get sculpted. And, I really have lost track of time, but I think it was three or four years ago that that thing got uh, that the original sculpt was made, and we've worked on it since then. The rules went through multiple drafts. I mean, we had Mark I uh, drafts of the, the fossil rules that we shelved and then uh, came back and readdressed and, uh, and, uh, and revised for Mark II. So, you know, to finally see them out there, it's kind of, it's a little bit of a dream come true because, you know, the, the motivation for doing everything that we do has always been creative satisfaction. So uh, seeing these things out there and seeing people get excited about them and what they want to do with them. There's already some that are out there playing on the tables. And I, I heard somebody actually has already painted one and is going to be playing with it tomorrow. So I, it's, it's super exciting. Awesome. Well, speaking of things long awaited, we're also looking forward to, at least me with bated breath, uh, the upcoming Iron Kingdoms RPG. Right. You guys are getting back in the RPG sort of game, so to speak. Uh, uh, why is it important to get back to that? I guess almost back to the roots of Prime Press. Um, it's, it, it's just, you know, again, I, I guess we don't have a lot of strategies what we do. We do what we do because we like to, right? Because it's cool and, and uh, you know, everybody at Privateer is an RPG fan. And, uh, you know, and like I said, it's, it's kind of our roots. It's where we sort of establish the setting. And I think that while we've got to explore a lot of uh, cool aspects of the, the, the setting through War Machine and Wars, we've always missed that opportunity to uh, to kind of look under the the, the unturned stone and you know in those those dark nooks and crannies that you can really only 
explore in a, in a you know, in that RPG environment, right? And, uh, and so it's something that we've always wanted to get back to. It's just it's always been a matter of, of timing and resources for us. And uh, you know, we're not uh, we don't have unlimited bandwidth to to create things. So we and we've been really focused for the last few years on uh, uh, Mark II and uh, getting that developed. And obviously, we've got some of the big things that we wanted to do in the, the Mark II environment, like battle engines and consoles. And uh, we finally had the, the time to start thinking about the, the game and the, the RPG, and uh, uh, you know, actually having some, some sincere discussions about it. And then, and then what we did was, I think, uh, to sort of cross the Rubicon, we announced that we were going to do it when we were having it, and, uh, and then we had to ourselves to it. So, uh, so now that yeah, it's. it's, it's uh, it's inbound imminently, and everybody's excited to, to, to see it. Um, we've gotten to play it you know, through our playtest in the house, and I think that um, uh, one of the things that we that we're really happy about is that it it's got its foundation in the War Machine Records rule set, and so there's familiarity there to anybody who plays the Avengers game right now. But it also means that we've been able to. Uh, translate much more faithfully and accurately the, the concepts of things like forecasters um, and, uh, and magic in, in our setting that we always struggled with with the D20 rules, right? But we were sort of trying to adapt our our world to a rule set that we didn't create or sort of have the best command. And uh, that didn't stop us from you know creating a lot of great uh, backstory and background material, but when it came to the rules, like we uh, we found a challenging work inside the, the parameters that we had to work with. And now we were, you know, we're in charge. Yeah. Uh, and so it feels it feels it's, it's somewhat liberating and uh, empowering to you know, these are these are our rules and it's our system and it's going to support the, the conceptual ideas much better. Awesome. So, you know, you're, you're exploring every aspect of this world of Kane and the Iron Kingdoms. Um, stepping away from that, we have the upcoming, you know, it's the board game level 7, but you know, that's sort of the first exploration of this new world. Um, how, how do you sort of pull yourselves out, yourselves out of this, like, this entire incredible world you created and say, I'm going to start from scratch? Um, how? Well, it's, you know, I kind of, I have to do it sort of by necessity. You can spend only so much time with your head in one space, and uh, and you got to kind of come up for air. But when I do that, I still uh, I still feel like I need things that are created. So I just sort of bounce from one idea to the other. And, uh, so when I had an opportunity to pause from what I was working with, uh, and actually was in the kitchen setting, I had this other idea that I wanted to develop. And that's, that's sort of where it came um, so, sort of a, a question on art and creativity. Uh, to me, it's been far too long. It's been some time since your work graced the cover of, of one of the books. Are you looking at getting back into the cover uh, uh, illustrating business? No, not not anytime <laughs> soon. I, uh, I kind of I, uh, I hung up my paintbrushes for a camp, so I spent the last few years uh, making films, and uh, and for me, I have found that to be. Uh, creatively satisfying as, as the, the artwork before. And I kind of, I feel like I sort of uh, took the, the painting as far as I could at the time. Um, I, uh, I love seeing the work from Andrea and Esther on their covers and you know, what they're doing with that stuff. And I feel like, I feel like they are capturing more of what I always wanted to see in there. And, uh, and right now, Working with images that now move. Awesome. Well, last and final question. Everyone has seen Big Blue and been blown away since you know, last year when he first made an appearance. Will we ever see a Big Red? Uh, I, we don't have any plans for it right now. It's, uh, you know, it's not like we're going to start uh, turning those things out. I, I sure hope so, but it's probably not. All right. Well, thank you very much. Right, thank you. Uh, everyone stay tuned for more coverage of Lock and Load 2012 at uh, Lost Hemisphere.